Let me just bounce one off of you here. See if you've heard something like this before. Tabletop role-playing is all about collaborative storytelling. You and your friends come together to tell the tale of characters. Watch the events unfold. What's the ending of the story? Well, you can find out together. Now, I have no objection to that particular description. It sounds kind of interesting. I think it's a, a little bit sweeping in its pronouncements. I noticed that it really rode hard on that phrase, collaborative storytelling, which is actually pretty new in the hobby. At least five years ago or so meant something pretty specific as new games were starting to take hold that had more of this collaborative collaborative storytelling idea as part of their gameplay. I'm seeing it more and more in some other places that you would be really surprised, and this video is going to be about that. But first, I'm going to distract myself by eating a giant chunk of nutmeg. Mmm. Mmm. Spice must flow, you guys. Wow, this is really good stuff. In the quarantine, my wife has started picking up some really boutique spices, and this one is really vivid. Whew. So let's start off by saying, how did collaborative storytelling get into vogue? Well, around five, six, seven, could be eight years ago by now, Powered by the Apocalypse and Fate started to really take hold as games that were very popular and had some mechanics that were pretty interesting. Powered by the Apocalypse, and in particular Dungeon World, invited the players to create parts of the world, to say, this is the village, this is the road, this is the forest, these are the goblins that we're fighting. The players who were behind those characters really actually planted these seeds within the world. If you're familiar with more traditional role-playing games, the dungeon master creates the world, says where the villages are, uh, says who the NPCs are, role plays them, and the characters create their characters, say how their characters feel, sometimes write parts of their characters' backstories, but in general, the players then take on the role of the character, get inside the character's head, see through the character's eyes, know the things the characters know, and also don't know the things that the characters don't know. It's a, not a huge contrast, really. On the one hand, you're in a more authorial role where everyone at the table has more of the GM's prerogative to create the setting. And in a more traditional RPG that doesn't have mechanics and concepts that create that sort of thing, it's more about experiencing the world and sometimes being surprised by it, pleasantly and unpleasantly. On the one hand, conjuring from thin air, lawyers, guns, and money to save your characters from a pickle that they're in. And on the other hand, prison breaks, clever bribes, and extricating yourselves with skill and aplomb that only spies could have from some debacle in the global south. It's up to you what style or what genre you're really looking for and what the role of everyone at the table is. Boy, I'm starting to get a little distracted here. The flavor's starting to hit hard. Where was I? So there's collaborative storytelling as a buzzword, as a phrase. I'm seeing it in more and more places. You may have caught that I was a little bit critical. It showed up in some Paizo ad copy promoting Pathfinder 2. They said it was a collaborative storytelling game. And I said, hmm, aren't there some other RPGs out there that actually have collaborative storytelling mechanics? Hmm, that seems a little disingenuous. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That harvest, once sown, has come to be reaped. I was in a conversation a week ago with a friend, and he said that he was playing some Call of Cthulhu, and he was asked to name an NPC. So here he is, and he's an investigator in a Call of Cthulhu adventure, trying to sleuth out some supernatural stuff that's going on, track down a cult, unfold a rosette-shaped conspiracy, and come out alive. Perhaps for his sanity to survive the revelations of an uncaring universe. It turns out that the gods that lurk beneath the earth care nothing for men, and in fact, are far older than life or Earth itself. This is the horror, the fundamentals of Call of Cthulhu as a genre game. 
of cosmic horror and of investigation. In most kinds of mysteries, the viewer doesn't get to see who the culprit is or exactly how the conspiracy was constructed that led to the inciting event that brought the investigator on board, i.e. the crime. It's the fun of following the investigator and seeing their methods and experiencing the revelations, sometimes grotesque or gruesome, as they journey towards the final culmination, that's, uh, that's part of the joy of the investigation genre. There was a show called Columbo that did some things differently, and uh, uh, I'll read this little blurb and pause if you want me to explain exactly why that doesn't count. So, secrets and hidden information are pretty important to the mystery genre, and also, in some respects, knowing that there is a fixed reality, an objective one out there, uh, gives you some confidence that you can solve it. Yeah, this is a crime, somebody did do it. How does the old Sherlock Holmes saying go? Uh, an ancestor of mine maintained that if you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And that thrilling feeling of riding the rocket towards whatever absurd reality it is that allows the events to be as they are so, that's investigation. That's the fun of it, for my part, when it comes to role-playing. Likewise, cosmic horror is about the universe not caring. You're not special. It's about the idea that mankind itself, not special. The Earth, not special. Biological life itself, maybe not actually special. It's a tragic premise, and it's not necessarily one that I hold in my day-to-day -day life, and I even prefer optimism in my own game mastering and in my own creations, but I respect cosmic horror as a genre and as a vehicle for role-playing. I experienced my first horrible revelation in a Leagues of Gothic horror game a couple years ago playing with Runeslinger, that moment where my character beheld his brother warped into a strange being from the sea. It really did things to my character, and I was there with him as he lost those sanity points. So hidden information also means the revelations can be terrible. Holding on to your sanity as you find these things out, um, it, the shocking element of it is fundamental to part of what Call of Cthulhu has been over the decades. I see well, the impossible, whatever remains of the improbable must be true. Was that it? I'm afraid, John. Afraid? Sure, I'll always be able to keep myself distant. Divorce myself from feelings. But look, you see, body's betraying me. Interesting, yes, emotions. I'm not saying you can't take it in a different direction, but it is a step away from the center of gravity. So wasn't I surprised to hear that my friend was saying that in a semi-organized play scenario, players were being asked to come up with elements of the world. Now, what does it do to an investigation when you know, there can be these inserts of characters? What does it leave to your confidence that there really is a particular trail of clues that leads to the final solution? You can say that all this stuff happens behind the screen normally with a game master, but at least I have that blissful ignorance that maybe it is all a particular reality. And as a game master myself, I do try to keep things straight and consistent behind the screen. Just as a preference of my own, I, I don't change things as they unfold. I don't I don't make it so that, oh, it really was the butler, guys, because you said it was the butler. You, you got it. That's not my style. So Call of Cthulhu as a particular RPG rests upon some strong genre fundamentals of investigation and revelation. And maybe collaborative storytelling starts to muddy the waters when it comes to the chain of custody of that hidden information. After all, how can you be powerless versus an uncaring universe when the universe is controlled literally by you, the player? So it could be, and this is just an opinion, I'm, I'm just putting this out here uh, humbly, Call of Cthulhu might be a place where there's some contrasts evinced between collaborative storytelling and classical role-playing. I say role-playing because that means getting into the character, enjoying stepping through the looking glass, 
being on the other side of the wardrobe. That's why I got into this hobby for my part originally was to experience things like that, to be in other worlds or to be the vessel for those other worlds as the game master. I think that collaborative storytelling is a lot like that nutmeg. It can really get onto your palate and uh, not every dish needs it, but boy, that's a powerful flavor. Hope you have a great morning, folks. Keep playing RPGs. After I shot this video, I talked a little bit more and I learned that it was just sort of a throwaway NPC that was before the start of the adventure that wasn't going to relate to any kind of mythos investigation. And so it's, it's really not a ton of nutmeg. The question is still out there of when is it too much? And do you know when the veil of mystery has been cast and player provided information in this collaborative storytelling mode uh, starts to muddy the waters? It's